All right, so we're back with another installment of the Momentous Podcast. Today's topic is, how do you know if YouTube is right for you? You have to ask ask yourself two questions. Basically, is the content that you're going to be sharing right for YouTube? And two, are you just, are you able to handle social media? Those are just two questions in general. The first thing you got to ask yourself, okay, so is the content that you're going to be sharing right for YouTube? YouTube used to be a platform where you can just share any content you want. You have full creative freedom. Now, YouTube has a specific agenda. And you don't have free speech on YouTube. You can't just post whatever you want. It's heavily monitored and censored. So YouTube does not give you a free speech platform, unfortunately. And this is because YouTube is a YouTube just wants to make money off of everybody. Unfortunately, YouTube does not care about the creators. It doesn't you fend for yourself on YouTube, basically. There is no support. The only support that you get is from your viewers. The people who actually run the company don't care about the creators. And I'm not just saying this to to start anything, but you can ask any other YouTuber, any other creator on this platform, and they'll tell you exactly what I'm telling you right now. You get zero support from the staff at YouTube. And uh, my mic is kind of droopy here, so I'm going to probably end up holding it like this throughout the whole entire podcast, so forgive me this Rockville stand. Don't ever buy from Rockville. This stand is absolutely awful. But I keep using it because it's so compact. But I keep ending up paying for it during the video that I record. So, uh, yeah, so that's a question you just constantly have to ask yourself is just, you know, what kind of content you, are you going to be sharing? If it's educational content, 70, 70% of the time, YouTube is going to be okay with it. However, if you're sharing educational content, specifically content that has to do with history, uh, you have a very good chance of YouTube demonetizing you or just not pushing your content out. Uh, A lot of people who talk the truth about YouTube or speak the truth about YouTube get demonetized. This will probably end up demonetizing. I don't know. I don't know. But just... Just be cautious that uh, YouTube will censor and monitor you heavily. It's just the way it is. And you just got to think to yourself, is this what you want to be sharing? Is this what you want to be doing? Uh, Instagram is also very similar, but I did find out that, uh, you know, comparing the two platforms, you know, I have over 100,000 followers on both platforms on Instagram and YouTube. So... I did find it uh, easier to push content on Instagram than on YouTube. I remember starting YouTube uh, with the intention of just sharing knowledge, just sharing, you know, what I've learned, you know, and it was, it's fantastic. And after diving into multiple different fields on YouTube, for example, I was in uh, you know, sharing knowledge about dirt bikes and gas scooters. That was great. I ended up being demonetized on that platform. The second topic that I was working in was the dating industry and like, uh, you know, um, you know, how to approach women. And the, I, I was just filming the content. I wasn't necessarily in the content. That content also got demonetized. And now I'm in the filmmaking, you know, stuff, and I got a copyright claim on my own videos. My own videos, I got I got some sort of claim. It wasn't even specifically copyright. It was just a, a warning, a copyright strike warning on one of my videos that I did for Boris FX, and the video was removed. I appealed it to YouTube, and they didn't tell me why. So there, it just says I violated the terms. What terms did I violate? They don't make it clear. They don't make it clear. And you know what? They don't care. They don't 
care. So it's really annoying to have to make videos and yes, filmmaking tutorials, knowing that if I have any little thing, any minor controversial thing that you can get banned, you can get demonetized, you can get silenced. And it, it just, it can, it can suck. It can really suck. For the most part, though, with the filmmaking topic, with the filmmaking niche, which is a really large audience, uh, it's been positive. It's been positive. But I have had issues with YouTube, even with the filmmaking topic in the filmmaking industry. You don't even have to be controversial, man. You don't. Uh, you will get censored regardless. One minor thing that you don't even pick up on and boom, they'll demonetize you. They'll do this. They'll do that. So YouTube is a very sketch platform. It was built off of the intention of sharing knowledge and entertainment. But I never saw YouTube becoming a platform where it's just, you know, it's just so heavily monitored. And I'm not going to say what kind of <laughs> what kind of platform I think this is now. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. If you look back at history, you'll know what kind of governments existed that implemented similar rules. I don't have to say it. It's pretty obvious. So if I say it, I'll get I'll get demonetized and I will most likely get a strike. So I'm not going to get into that. You guys can comment down below what type of governments in history have done stuff that YouTube is currently doing. I still love YouTube. I still love the fact that we can have access to infinite amount of knowledge. I hate the fact that we're constantly censored. But this is stuff that you have to ask yourself. Is this the right platform for you? Okay, so is your content good for YouTube? That's up to you. I hope that that this section of the podcast has helped you out. Uh, the second section is, you know, can you handle social media in general? And what I mean by this is, can you handle criticism? Can you handle stupid people? Yeah, stupid people exist. I don't think I'll get demonetized or banned for saying that, but stupid people do exist. They surround us. Unfortunately, I do think that they make up the majority of the population. <laughs> uh, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, this just, this dealing with stupid people, haters, trolls, this just makes you a better person because it tests your patience. I deal with people face to face that test my patience. And overall, I've become, excuse my watch for going off, uh, but overall, I do. F uh, I do find that my patience is very good. I have a very high tolerance for dealing with people that are just overall annoying and just like, uh, in the, in the beginning days of YouTube, if someone criticized me, I would, I would blow up. I would go crazy. Um, it was just really irritating and it was very difficult for me to even handle healthy criticism. But now I look at healthy criticism. I see if I, I, I judge whether or not it makes sense, if it does make sense, then I implement it. Just like with you guys in the beginning of this podcast series, you told me that the audio sounded weird because I wasn't recording in mono, I was recording in stereo. I implemented the changes and now you are saying that the audio is better. So that's constructive criticism, things that actually make sense, things that are helpful. I've had people that just say, oh, boo, this is so boring. Like, that that's a troll comment. Those are stupid comments. I mean, you also have to understand that no matter what content you put out, you're always going to have an audience. So those trolls can go F themselves, all right? They really can. There is an audience for everybody. You just got to find that audience. And the best way to do that is just start publishing content and start really getting in that consistent upload, you know, type of habit. You have to be very consistent. YouTube doesn't want to see any less than three YouTube uploads a week. They don't. Because they want, the more you publish, the more people stay on YouTube to look at your content and the more revenue YouTube gets. This is how it works. 
And did you know that YouTube takes 45% of your monetization? Did you also know, know that if your YouTube channel gets demonetized, they still put ads on your videos and they take 100% of the profits? Like, do you know all those things? You have to consider all of that. You have to consider that YouTube is, can be greedy. You know, so if you're thinking about doing YouTube full time, just consider these things. Consider other revenues, other ways to make money. Consider Patreon, consider Amazon affiliates. You have to consider all of these things. But back to like social media in general, yes, you have to deal with a lot of people. You have to deal with a lot of brands. Check out my previous podcast where I talk about dealing with brands and just understanding that some of them can be snaky, some of them can be legit. These are things you really have to look into, all right? I still love YouTube. I still have a heart and passion for YouTube because in the beginning, it was a vision it was an it was it's an it's still an incredible platform. I just don't like the people who are running it. That's all. I think YouTube is still a very powerful, very good platform. It's just like it could be so much better. 2008, 2009, those were the glory days of YouTube. This is when YouTube was just like at its peak. YouTube went down. But I think that there is still hope with YouTube if there's different people running it. Uh, you just have to decide if being monitored constantly, being censored constantly, and just like rethinking. Before you make a video, you always have to rethink like your approach. Is it, is your content gonna offend people? And in this day and age, it's very easily, very easy to offend somebody. Very easy. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it's true. People have a uh, paper thin skin. They can't toughen up. Um, and you know what? YouTube made me toughen up in the beginning. When people bullied me and like haters trolled and all that stuff, I got tough skin because of that. But now since, you know, that has been taken away and YouTube bans people like that, you know, people become very, 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 very sensitive. There's pluses and minus on both sides, guys. But I do think that people do need to experience some hate in order to progress in social media specifically. So I've dealt with a lot of haters, I've dealt with threats, I've dealt with so much BS, but overall you just gotta be like, you just gotta take a deep breath and just be like, you know what? I'm better than that. Test, I have my patience is like, my heart rate is always, you know, it's never going like this whenever I read hate comments or I just chill. I just like, okay. Plus don't forget. You can always delete comments. You can, you can always delete comments guys. YouTube may monitor you, but you can monitor your audience. Don't forget that. But I don't really delete comments anymore. If haters want to hate, I'll leave their comment up. Who looks like the a-hole, a-hole, me or them, <laughs> me by just not responding or them just by hating. They do. You're better than that. So these are just the things that you just got to look out for when you're starting a YouTube channel or when you're just on social media in general. Can you deal with hate? But when you deal with love, it's overwhelmingly beautiful on YouTube and on social media. When somebody comments on your content saying that, wow, you helped me out with depression. Oh, wow, you helped me get more creative with my projects. Wow, you helped me get out of the house and actually pursue my dreams. When you get comments like that, when you get feedback like that, your heart warms up. You get a smile on your face and this is what motivates you to do better, to do more 
to produce better content for your viewers so that you motivate them even more and more and more and more and more. The hate can make you mad, but when you get love, it takes you to a whole other level. And YouTube and Instagram, they have a lot of love. There is a lot of love on these platforms. It's 20% hate, 80% love, I promise you. I promise you. Unless you're putting out content that's specifically designed to incite hate. Okay, obviously that's horrible. But you sh your, your motive should be to put out content that entertains, that enlightens people, that helps share knowledge. This is what my intention was, especially in the beginning. And it is now. I'm still trying to find new ways on how to educate and just share my what I've learned in my life. So that's another reason why I started this podcast, so I can be real raw and just tell you what the real life experiences are doing social media full time, being a YouTuber and Instagram or TikTok or full time. Like this is what you have to deal with. This is what you can expect. So in the comment section below, what I want you to do is let me know if you think you're right to pursue this type of business. What do you think should be changed on YouTube and on Instagram and on TikTok for you to flourish even more? Let me know in the comment section. I hope this podcast has helped you out. I'll see you guys in another one. Peace.